Former President Donald Trump is officially back on the campaign trail, holding what they described in the campaign as the first rally of his 2024 presidential uh, campaign to return to the White House yesterday in Waco, Texas. The event featured all of Trump's familiar lies about the 2020 election. He also called for the elimination of the deep state. Uh, but as he is facing legal investigations in three different jurisdictions, Trump complained about what he sees uh, is the newest weapon in the Democrats' attempts to steal the next election. This is how he put it. Prosecutorial misconduct is their new tool, and they are willing to use it at levels never seen before in our country. We've had it, but we've never had it like this. We must stop them, and we must not allow them to go through another election where they have yet another tool in their toolkit. And joining me now to talk about all of this, uh, Congresswoman uh, Zoe Lofgren of California. She was a member of the January 6th Select Committee. Uh, Congresswoman, uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, what do you make of uh, Trump's comments about these investigations swirling around him? He's talking about prosecutorial misconduct. Uh, and we, as we mentioned with Daniel Dale, our fact checker in the previous hour, he's not offering any evidence of that. He's just saying it. Well, there is no evidence. And I, I think, obviously, he uh, appears to be worried that he will be uh, indicted. I don't know if he'll be indicted, uh, but certainly he engaged in criminal conduct. I mean, our committee did criminal referrals. Of course, doing the referral and uh, you know, being the prosecutors, two, two different things. They have to make sure that not only do they have probable cause, but I think given uh, the high profile of the potential defendant, they're going to want to ensure, ensure that they have sufficient evidence to convict. So uh, there's no evidence whatsoever that there's anything improper on the part of the prosecutors, although um, the ex-president certainly tried to weaponize the Department of Justice when he was president. And he called the 2024 campaign the final battle last night. He did this in Waco, Texas, during the 30th anniversary of the infamous standoff between federal agents and the Branch Davidian cult uh, in that area. Let's listen to that. And 2024 is the final battle. That's going to be the big one. Our enemies are desperate to stop us because they know that we are the only ones who can stop them. All of the hatred, rage, and contempt the radical left has for you and your values and this nation has been very much directed on me. Either the deep state destroys America or we destroy the deep state. They're not coming after me. They're coming after you, and I'm just standing in their way. It's the same language of incitement that we've heard time and again from the former president. We know that uh, late last week, the House Democratic leader, Hakeem Jeffries, was talking about how he was worried that somebody could get killed uh, with all of this yeah. rhetoric flying around. Are you worried about that, too? Well, I think it's a concern. The uh, rhetoric that he's using today uh, is not dissimilar to the type of rhetoric he used prior to January 6th. In fact, in some ways, it's more overt and blatant than the uh, uh, events leading up to January 6th. I mean, he posted uh, a picture of himself holding a baseball bat uh, next to the uh, prosecutor in Manhattan, uh, calling the prosecutor a number of horrible names like an animal and thug. Um, he... Uh, disparaged the idea that uh, his po followers should remain peaceful. Um, you know, it, this is cause for concern. We know that certainly not all of his followers are inclined to take up arms, but there's enough of them who are willing to do battle in his behalf that uh, someone could get killed, and people were killed, obviously, on January 6th. And he kicked off uh, this rally with a version of the Star Spangled Banner. Uh, perhaps you've seen this. Uh, and this version was sung by a group mm -hmm. of inmates currently jailed for their role in the January 6th attack on the Capitol. As the song played, Trump was standing on the stage uh, with his hand over his heart and so on as, as images from the attack on the Capitol played on screen. Uh, what did you think of that? Well, he's elevating the violence. We know from our investigation that he tried uh, various ways to overturn the election, 
but he was left only with mob violence by the time January 6th rolled around. To elevate people who have been either convicted or in most cases uh, pled guilty to violent assault, these were individuals who viciously attacked police officers in the assault on the Capitol. That's not patriotism. Uh, and that he would elevate them as admirable, I think, tells me a lot about where the ex-president is in terms of uh, honoring and encouraging violence. Uh, I think it's something that's cause for concern. I am worried, frankly, that my Republican colleagues, I think many of them don't agree, but they are not speaking up, and they need to do that, or else, once again, we'll see um, potentially a violence brought into the political arena, and that's not American. That's the abs absolute opposite of being pro-American. And, and finally, a federal judge ruled this week that some Trump allies, top Trump allies, names you would recognize, uh, would be compelled to testify before a grand jury about the events uh, surrounding January 6. You served on the House January 6 committee. Um, I mean, you, you tried mightily on that committee to have some of these people, people like Mark Meadows, come and testify. You couldn't compel that testimony. It sounds like they'll have to cooperate with this grand jury. What questions need to be asked? Well, I have a lot of questions. I mean, Meadows was involved on a day-to-day -day basis uh, with the president on these various schemes. I'd like to know, frankly, what documents uh, Mark was burning in the fireplace that's been reported by several people. I'd like to know about the conversations they had and what the ex-president was doing on January 6th itself. I'd like to know the details of the meeting on December 21st where members of Congress came over to plot uh, with the ex-president uh, and Mr. Meadows to overturn the election. But, you know, he still has his Fifth Amendment right uh, not to testify against himself. Uh, and I think he certainly does have some criminal exposure. You know, one of the people I'd like to talk to uh, was Dan Scavino, who, again, was there the entire time on January 6th. He could tell us what the president, the ex-president, was doing. And also, he was, you know, right by the president's side every time there was a digital uh, message that was sent out. And I think he could tell us a lot about that, too. He also, of course, has the Fifth Amendment right not to uh, testify against himself. All right, Congresswoman Zoe Lofgren of California, uh, thanks very much for your time. We appreciate it, as always. Thank you.